On this day in 1951, Jock Steen signed for Celtic from Llanetli Town. Of all the signings made by Celtic in their long history, only that of James Kelly in 1888 can compare in importance to the signing of Jock Steen. Steen was regarded as the very epitome of the journeyman centre half when he left Albion Rovers for non-league Clanethley Town, who then spelled their name with a Y rather than an I in 1950. This was actually a step up for him as Clanethley, unlike Albion Rovers, were a full-time professional club. At Clifton Hill, Steen had worked in the mines during the week. Most newspaper reports expressed surprise at the signing of the 28-year-old, with Celtic already seemingly well covered for centre-halves. The Dundee Courier of the 5th of December 1951 wrote, First glance, it seems a strange signing for Celtic to make. They already have three top-grade centre-halves in Bowden, Marlin and McGrory. But the Parkhead Club have found that all three seem to be operating under an injury hoodoo. Hardly a week passes without one or more being in the trainer's hands. Bowden and Malin have been in and out of the first team since the start of the season and McGrory has also had long spells on the injured list. In these circumstances, the signing of a fourth pivot is in the nature of an insurance policy. Said manager McGrory last night, we have to make sure of having an experienced man standing by. It was widely reported that Steen would play for the reserves in the C Division against Dundee United that weekend, so it was entirely unexpected when he made his first team debut in a 2-1 win over St Mirren at Celtic Park on the 8th of December. The Glasgow Herald of the 10th of December 1951 reported, The announcement of Steen as Celtic centre-back caused a ripple of surprise on the terracing. His signing from a non-league club after six years' service for Albion Rovers has not been accepted as a cure for Celtic's troubles, but for more than an hour on Saturday, this tall, well-built player staked a claim for a regular place in the first 11. Before he not unexpectedly tired late in the game, he displayed confidence in himself and appeared to radiate confidence among his defensive colleagues, and his clearing in the air and on the ground was accurate as well as lengthy. Steen may not have been the most technically gifted of players, but it quickly became obvious his organisational ability and positional sense were invaluable assets, and by 1953 he had been made club captain following a long-term injury to Sean Fallon, who had selected him as his vice-captain. One of Steen's greatest performances came in the Coronation Cup final of 1953, when he gave the normally deadly Laurie Riley barely a sniff of the ball to win what was the unofficial British Championship. That was followed up in season 1953-54 with the League and Scottish Cup double, Celtic's first league championship since 1938 and the first double since 1914. At a club function after the Scottish Cup final in 1954, Bob Kelly gave a speech in which he said, Celtic's luckiest day was the day we signed our captain, Jock Steen. Steen was already showing his tactical acumen, leading tactical discussions when the players ate lunch every day at Ferrari's, a city centre restaurant. Jock Steen's playing career was ended by a chronic ankle injury in 1956, which left him walking with a slight limp for the rest of his life. But Kelly almost immediately put him in charge of the reserves, where he began the development of players like Bertie Auld, Billy McNeil, Steve Chalmers and John Clark, who all idolised him as youngsters. When Steen left to become Dunfermline manager in March 1960, there were rumours he had been told as a non-Catholic he had gone as far as he could at Celtic, but Steen nevertheless kept in close contact with Bob Kelly and always hoped he would one day return. After saving Dunfermline from relegation in his first few months in the job, he led them to their first ever major trophy in 1961, beating, inevitably, Celtic in the Scottish Cup final. After turning unfashionable Dunfermline into one of Scotland's leading clubs, it was to Kelly Steen turned for advice when approached by Hibernian in 1964. A year later, when he was offered the manager's job at Wolves, it was again to Bob Kelly he turned for advice, and hearing for the second year in a row he was available, this time Kelly finally took the hint and offered him the Celtic job. 
Jock Steen turned Celtic into one of the best teams in Europe for the next decade after becoming only their fourth manager in January 1965. Had he never played for Celtic, he would never have been offered the manager's job. When Bob Kelly made that speech in 1954, he could not have possibly imagined just what a lucky day it had been for Celtic when they signed their captain, Jock Steen. <laughs>